Um, back again. Still pretty cold in England. Kitty still snuggling. Um, today we're going to have a little chat about how to pace your story. A good story should have ups and downs, highs and lows, tension, but also periods of calm. It should take you on a journey. You should follow along with the characters and you should feel for them, like truly care for them. A good story should draw you in and keep you wanting more. Make you want to keep turning the page, desperate to find out what happens next. One of the ways you can achieve this is with the pace of your story. Just like a good movie, the way the story is constructed and paced is a huge influence on how you read it and how the story affects you. One of the first things to do is to look at the structure of your story. Look at your plot. Look at your plans for this story. You should be able to identify the way that it kind of naturally flows. All stories have got a natural flow to them and you should be able to identify that within your plot. By that, I mean that you should be able to see that where there's action, where there's calm, sadness, happiness, that sort of thing. Uh, if you can't naturally see this, then you likely have problems with your pacing. But it's, it's an easy fix. We're going we're gonna to cover that. Don't you worry. Look at your plot points and ask yourself the following question. How do I want my readers to feel? Okay. Once you have the answer to this question, think back to a scene from a book that you loved and that made you feel that way. How did they do it? Did they slow down the action? Did they draw out a really emotional discovery? Did you feel shock because a dramatic moment like happened in a blink of an eye with no warning? All of this is pacing. Tension and action can be created not just with your word choices but with your sentence construction. Short choppy sentences and paragraphs will give you the impression of speed. Um, it will keep the reader's eyes flying across the page, speeding along, following the story. And at the height of the action, say, just as the hero has cut their way through an ar the army of their enemy, and they're looking for that one person they hate most in the world. And they hear from behind someone calling their name. This would be a good place to end your chapter and to start a new one. This will keep your reader engaged and they'll want to turn the page to find out what happens next. They're going to be at this, this just one more chapter moment because they have to know. In a slower paced scene... Maybe one where your character is revealing some of their tragic backstory or something like that. You'd probably want to use longer, more in-depth sentences. Sentences that have more emotion, more poetry, more beauty to them. You want to slow the pace down. You want to let your reader linger over every single word and like really let it sink in and take root. If you do a big reveal usually with lots of details that you want your reader to remember for later, you need to do it slower. Imagine someone telling you their life story, okay, but at a hundred mile an hour pace. You're going to miss half of what they say. You won't have time to take any of it all in and to truly appreciate and understand and truly emphasise with their story. If you want your reader to do the same, then you need to match your writing to the scene that you want to create. You would add even more details to a slower paced scene, especially if you want to put special emphasis on a single moment. Think of it almost like a slow motion scene in a movie, how every sense is heightened and you can catch every teeny tiny little detail. I edited a story for a friend who had no clue about pacing. She used a lot of like teeny choppy sort of sentences when there was no need for it, even in a really emotional, sensitive moment. And the whole story, reading it, just felt like a race. It felt like I was reading a story that was stuck on fast forward. And honestly, it wasn't just exhausting to read it, but it was like really hard going because the story didn't draw me in at all. I couldn't, I, it felt wrong. It kind of, it felt off. And that's the difference that pacing can make to a story. Never ignore your character development. This too can help control the pace of the story. 
character development through introspection is a really great way to slow the pace of your story and to add in some much needed details. It's kind of like a double whammy effect that you can do. A story usually follows a basic formula. I know, I know, you, you don't have to tell me. You don't want to be the same as everybody else. You don't want to follow a formula. I get it, I do. I'm a rebel myself. We all want to feel like our stories are unique and special, which they are. They are because it's your story. But sometimes you've got to face the facts. You've got to face the facts that there's a limited number of plots. Nothing is ever going to be an original idea. Everything, and I mean everything, has been done before. So you don't have to follow this formula. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to. But the fact is that if a story deviates too much from this kind of formula, many readers will feel like there's something missing. Like the story just didn't feel right. It's a formula. Think of it as it's a recipe for a reason. You know, there's basic ingredients that you need. Think of it like baking a cake. Okay, you've got your basic eggs, butter, flour, sugar combo. You know, that's your base. It's then that you add the extras to make it your own. So chocolate chips, spices, flavourings, decorate the top, jazz it up, make it unique and special to you. But the core of the cake will always be the same. It's always going to be a cake. This is always going to be a story. It's always going to have to follow the same kind of formula and the same recipe to make it feel like a story. The formula always starts with a hook. Something in your first chapter that needs to grab your reader's attention and give them a reason to want to keep reading. Then you get to the first plot point, which is somewhere around about a quarter of the way into your book or your story. And it's an event that usually occurs which forces the protagonist to face up to their problems in life and to try to fix them. Got midpoint about halfway through a story, you usually find the main character smack bang in the middle of some dramatic conflict. Something which either forces them to change their stand or their opinion, or to push aside their previous reservations about something and to tackle their task with a renewed energy and determination. We kind of do this because around about the midpoint in a story, the pacing kind of tends to flag a little bit, and your reader might kind of feel like they're not getting anywhere and they, they want to just get on to the end of the story. They just want to get on to the end of it. They want to know what's going on. So if you do it this way, you put another big plot point in there, that will bring them back up again and renew their interest and really keep them reading, really grab and hold their attention. Climactic sequence is near the end of the book where you'll begin to work towards your ending and you're putting all of your plans and all your plot points into place. And lastly, you've got the resolution, which is in the final pages where you're tying your story up in like a neat little bow. All your plot threads have been picked up and they've been tied off and your main character's new life is established. I've said it once, I'll probably say it a thousand times more, but a story should almost be like a roller coaster ride. Starting at a lower point, often with your character being at a time in their lives where they need to make a change or they have nothing left to lose. The story then should start sort of an upwards journey, building to a high of your first major plot point. Back down, because that's a break in tension that you need, an action in the story, which kind of relaxes your reader a little bit. Because if you're doing too much in one go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel too much action. You can imagine watching an action movie where there's just no downtime in it whatsoever. It just, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to read, it's exhausting to watch. Then we're going to be going up again to your midpoint conflict and your drama. Um, down for another rest, and then up to your climax, followed by a final descent and down for your ending and your resolution. There is no way I can tell you definitively how to pace your story. Unfortunately, that's on you, because you know the story that you're trying to write, not me. But think of it, <laughs> I'm getting witchy here with you now, think of it as a magic spell. Okay, you've got the ingredients, but it's up to you to add the words and to make the magic happen. Once again, I'm going to preach the benefits of reading. Read, read, read. Read anything you can get your hands on. See what works for you and what doesn't. Write what you like to read. Read your own work out loud. Read it out loud. Be proud of that work. 
or better yet, get your computer or someone else to read it for you. Because that will help you so much when it comes to knowing the pace of your story. You'll learn to feel it, you'll be able to learn to feel like the ebb and flow of it as it goes. Um, if you still find it difficult to notice pace, pick up a book that you've really, really enjoyed and read some of the scenes aloud to yourself. Because that way you'll be able to notice sort of the natural rhythm the, that way and you'll be able to see how the pace changes with the type of writing that they've used. It takes practice, lots and lots and lots of practice, but I believe in you, you got this shit, you can do it, give it a go. Till next time, blessed be and happy writing.